Hi everyone and welcome to Civilization 6 Gathering Storm. So, thanks to 2K and Triaxis, I can showcase Gathering Storm content before launch. And this is something I wanted to do the moment I saw Maori as one of the new thieves. We are going to start with every single AI being Maori, so that they will all start in the middle of the ocean, and we'll play as one ourselves. I want to see how the AI is going to handle this kind of start. We are going to play on a small map, which normally has fewer sieves, so I added more than this map would normally have. That way it will be a little bit more crowded to make things slightly more interesting. And we will be playing on archipelago map with low sea level. I decided to play on Emperor because I don't want the AI to start with 5 million settlers, because if you don't know, on Deity for example, the AI starts with 3 settlers, 5 warriors and 2 builders, which is a little bit silly and would at least partially defeat the point of this exercise. Even on Emperor, they will still start with two settlers, but I'm okay with that. So, before we start, let's talk about what the Maori actually do, in case you don't know. They begin the game in an ocean tile, they gain a free builder and plus one population when settling their first city, the palace receives plus three housing and plus one amenity, and they get plus two science and plus two culture per turn before they settle their first city. They begin the game with sailing and shipbuilding technologies unlocked, and with the ability to enter ocean tiles. Embarked units gain plus 5 combat strength and plus 2 movement, so their embarked units can actually move a lot. Unimproved woods and rainforest are plus 1 production, becoming plus 2 once the conservation civic is unlocked. Fishing boats provide plus 1 food and culture bomb to adjacent tiles. Resources cannot be harvested. Great writers cannot be earned. They also have a unique building, which gives plus two culture and faith to all of the city styles with a passable feature, and after flight is researched, it gives plus two tourism to all of the city styles with a feature. It costs no maintenance, and it has no great work slots. And they get a unique classical era melee unit. Adjacent enemy units receive minus five combat strength. And that unique unit can also construct a unique tile improvement. Occupying unit receives plus 4 defense strength and automatically gains 2 turns of fortification. A Maori unit occupying a PA heals even if they just moved or attacked. So that's pretty nice. I also set disaster intensity to 4, because that's one of the major new features in Gathering Storm, and I want to see as many as possible. Unfortunately, you can't crank it up to 11. <laughs> I would do that if I could. And that's pretty much it. We are ready to get started. So let's get started. Alright then, so here we are, and we got plus two era score, because we worked hard to discover shipbuilding, obviously. We totally deserve it. And here we are, we got a warrior and we got a settler, and now we need to find some land. It looks like there's going to be some land to the east. Or maybe not? Well, there's something. Tundra. Not quite what I was looking for, but there's a goodie hut. We can check that out. Maybe we'll get something nice out of it. We got a military tradition boost. Alright, so let's see where we want to settle. This is an archipelago map, so we probably shouldn't be too picky. I guess we could settle here. The problem is that there's not a whole lot of production on this island. There isn't even a single hill which is a really bad thing. Let's see if we can find something slightly better. Uh, this looks a little bit more promising. Oh hey, it's us! <laughs> I mean, the other coupe. Okay. Well, here's the writing boss, because he met another civilization. We should probably settle down here. It's not going to be amazing, but we could maybe pick up the Pantheon, which will give us plus one hammer to fishing boats if we can unlock that fast enough. Yeah, I think I'm going to settle right here. We'll keep the forest, and we'll have three crabs in range, as well as pearls, mercury and citrus. It's not the most amazing city of all times, but I suppose it will have to do. Forests will be nice for us because we get plus one hammer, so that makes it one foot three hammers right away. That is really nice. Shame we only have one forest here. Alright, we are going to grab a slinger first, in case there are some barbarians nearby, and we are going to research animal husbandry. 
to reveal horses on the map. Because in case you didn't know, one of the biggest new changes in Gathering Storm is that strategic resources are a stockpile now. So when you get, let's say, horses, you get, let's say, plus two horses per turn. And they will stockpile over time. And you need certain amount of that resource to produce units and to upgrade units. So you can't just research a new unit and then upgrade all your existing ones in one go on the turn you finish it. You can't do that. You actually need to stockpile the strategic resource required for it. So yeah, there's that. Wait, there's actually iron here. Apparently there is. Because I can't build a farm and the tooltip says plus two iron per turn. That's interesting. Well, in that case, I accidentally settled a really nice city. That means we should try to unlock that ASAP. Oh, seriously? Well, I mean, that's not too bad, because we start the game with shipbuilding. All our units can already embark. So this is not actually a big deal. But that's a pretty funny location right there. Well, we do have some stone down there. We need to scout the area to find some other potentially good locations for cities. We are going to need a city with good production. And here's a city-state, Antioch. Train a quadrireme. Yeah, we could do that a little bit later. So let's grab a scout real quick. Yeah, this looks like I'm it might be a better it. city. There's animal husbandry. And we got horses. They are actually in range. But we need more money to buy that oh, tile. Oh, Here's the other Maori. Nice to meet you. Yeah, he took this location. That is definitely better, but I guess we won't be settling that now. So now we should probably get mining and then bronze working immediately after. If there's really iron right next to our city, we need to be able to see it. Yeah, this looks better already. This would be a reasonable city. There's God of Laws, so we'll grab God King to secure our Pantheon. And we could actually get Survey. Because I don't think we'll have any problems with Barbarians. And our scout is about to finish. And next up we will grab Foreign Trade and then Craftsmanship. We need to discover another continent to get that boost. Yeah, this is going to be our second city for sure. We got a few tiles with nice production over here. Like to the apples and we found the, the Dead, Dead Sea. Seashore. All ashes to the taste. It appears as a lake and provides plus two faith and plus two culture. Units heal completely if they heal for one turn adjacent to the Dead Sea. Does not provide fresh water. And that gives us astrology boost. Alright then. And we should probably grab a monument next. To get some culture. That's definitely a good idea. Let's send our scout in the opposite direction. And we do have enough money to buy a tile now. Well, let's grab one. We could grab the pearls. That is not a bad idea, especially since we can build fishing balls right away. In fact, we should probably go and do that. So let's get the pearls and we'll improve the crab and the pearls. Oh yeah, what's their actual agenda? It's something to do with protecting the environment. Retains natural features in his empire and builds national parks, like sieves who respect the environment, dislikes those who treat the planet poorly. Right, so he doesn't like when you chop forests and such. We definitely won't be doing that, because we get extra yields. And oh yeah, one of the best new features of Gathering Storm that you won't need mods for anymore is the production queue. I can actually queue things up now. And it won't tank your frame rate. Because the production queue mods that I used before were really bad for your frame rate. Now you don't have to be worried about that anymore. Uh, this actually looks very promising. Maybe this should be our second city. Let's disembark and take a look around. Any barbarians around here? Also, here's another feature. Rivers. Mountain ranges, deserts, and things like that get automatically named, and it's usually based on what sieves are close to that area. Obviously, that's not the case here, because we are playing with all Maori. Okay, here's another city-state. 
The Bandar Brunei city-state has given you a new quest, trigger Eureka for iron working. Yeah, we can certainly do that. If we have iron nearby. And apparently we do. Strategic resources are so important now. And here's what I was talking about. Mount Tarawera. You can actually turn that on and off. So if I go to map options, I can turn on the labels. Or I can turn them off if I want to. So let's keep them on, why not? This would be a decent one as well. There are a few hills. There's a forested hill. Two wheat tiles right next to each other. Four hills, actually. Oh, nice. Goody hat. Alright, let's keep scouting. Here's another Maori. It's going to get pretty confusing, who's who. But yeah, there it is. We got... Oh, nice. Experience. Yeah, I'll take it. So, there's the builder. Now we can go grab the horses. Now let's get a settler now. We are at 4 population, which is fine. Let's see if we can speed the settler up slightly. No, we cannot. It's going to be 9 turns regardless. Alright, 9 turns it is then. We got the horses. So now, we will be getting plus 2 horses per turn. You can actually see when you hover over that. We get 2 food, 3 production and 2 horses per turn. And now, when I end my turn, a stockpile will start building up on top of the screen. And it does have a cap. You can increase that cap with the encampment district buildings. So barracks, for example, increase the maximum size of the stockpile by 10. Right now, our maximum stockpile is 50. And we are accumulating 2 per turn. So it would be a good idea to sell some if we hit 50, or if we get close to 50. And since there's supposed to be iron on that hill, we might as well just build a mine. He already wants to buy it, as you can see, but I'm not selling at the moment. Volcano becomes active. Oh, nice. I hope I'll be able to show you some disasters. That's why I set them to maximum. It's a little bit disappointing you can't crank it up even more. Because honestly, they don't actually happen that often. Even when you set it to maximum like I did. They don't happen nearly enough. And we got the Pantheon. Let's see if it's actually still available. Because it might not be. Yeah, it's actually still available. Okay then, we will definitely grab that. That's a really nice choice for us. And here we go. These are some nice yields now. Let's lock the horse style, because that's going to be a very good one for production. Uh, I will not be locking the forest right now. We need two turns. No, we need one turn to finish the settler. Okay, good. And once we finish bronze working, we'll go for writing. And then irrigation. Yeah, bronze working, writing, irrigation. That's the idea. We need irrigation to improve the citrus. And we can also get the mercury. So how about we do that? We can actually buy that tile right away. So here it is. And let's go grab it. So there's our settler. Where do we want to settle? I could settle next to the volcano. Which might be a fun thing to do. We can actually see which tiles might get threatened with disasters in the future. So, we can see which tiles will get flooded when sea levels rise, which will not come into play until much later into the game, but it can be really important. We can also see which area is susceptible to flooding. So that's something to keep in mind. Okay, so we are going to settle the volcano, but not just yet. I would like to settle this area, because this is going to be a really nice city for us. There are quite a lot of resources in range, and we got some natural features that we can take advantage of. And now that we got the settler, before we get another one, we should probably grab a trader to get some more money, and possibly a quadrium to get the boost. And we are going to need another builder as well, but not yet. Let's get a trader, so that we'll get some money at least. Bronze is the mirror. And there's bronze working. 
and there is indeed iron over here. So this is a bug that seems to allow you to see where strategic resources are without actually discovering them. That is probably not intended. Oh, and here's another new mechanic, grievances. So warmonger points are not a thing anymore, they don't exist. Now there's a grievance system that actually works as a balance. So if you commit grievances towards other civilization, like let's say you capture their city, or maybe you capture a city-state that they were a suzerain of, they get a certain amount of grievances towards you, and then the world will ignore that amount committed by the other side, if that makes sense. It will be a little bit more clear once I show you how it actually works in action. But we can see our balance with any other sieve. Right now there's mostly none. We can see that there are 40 grievances against this guy. So now, because we had one envoy in Bandar Brunei, and that means we were friends with the city-state, we got 50 grievances against this guy because he declared war on that city-state. So I think that's the one. Yep, so 40 grievances. If we denounce them, that will generate 25. So then this number would change to 15. If we declared surprise war, that's 150, which means it would be 110 in reality, because we already got 40 against them. So that's how it works. A former war is 100, so that would generate 60. Basically, it works as a balance, which means you can do stuff to them if they did stuff to you, and the world will ignore it. At least that's the short explanation of how things work. And now we entered a classical era, which means we can pick up a dedication. That's probably going to be the first one. Plus one era score each time you trigger Eureka, and plus one era score for constructing buildings that provide science as the base yield. Alright, sounds good to me. And let's settle the city. That's going to be the one. Alright, there it is. Plus two era score. And we probably want a builder in there. How much would it cost us to just buy one? 230 gold. So we could actually buy one. But it's probably better if we recruit one. So let's just recruit one. Now, the trade routes. Let's send the trade route to our neighbor. That seems reasonable. We'll also get plus on faith. So that seems fine. Okay, let's do that then. Off you go. And we also get currency boost for sending the trade route. And I think we'll start with monument to expand our border as soon as possible. And here are the yields. To food, to production from the forest and from the jungle. Alright then. And now, since we don't want to remove features, I might actually skip Magnus. I would normally recruit Magnus first, because Groundbreaker is just so strong, but since we don't really want to remove features, I think it's best if we go for a different one. We could actually go for Liang, to get plus on builder charge. That's not a bad idea, let's go for Liang. And he might want to delay that builder by one turn, to take advantage of Liang. So let's build something for one turn. I can swap this, and we'll do Granary for one turn, then we can switch back to the builder. I'm really glad the production queue is part of the game now. That's going to make it so much better. And it works pretty well as well. So now we can switch back, back to the queue we go, and we can switch them back. So good. Meanwhile, since we are at 44 out of 50 horses in our stockpile, we can start selling some of it. So who do we want to sell it to? Uh, probably not this guy, because he's our neighbor. How about this fella? He's friendly, so we could do that. Okay, 70 gold for 20 horses is the best deal I can currently get. So you know what, I'm going to accept that. Because if we hit the maximum, the extra horses will be wasted. And here's the third city-state, which gives us political philosophy boost. Exactly what we needed. That is actually a really nice bonus from that city-state. 
your cities have full housing from water, as if they were all next to a river. And we can either improve Liang, or we can get a second governor. Plus 20% production towards districts in the city will be useful. So how about we get that? Because we'll also want a district in our capital in some near future. I don't want to wait too much longer. We'll grab the fishing boat and work that tile right away. And I think it's time to switch the scout to auto exploration. He wants to buy more horses. And we can also sell the pearls. That is a good idea. We can buy some whales. Here, that's an okay deal. I can live with that. We can accept. And no, I'm keeping the rest of my horses. Also, here's another new system. Diplomatic favor. Which you can actually use as currency now. So we can buy things, we can yeah, sell things. They uh, hold that for so here's a natural wonder, total impassable natural wonder, plus one amenity. It provides an additional amenity if adjacent to an entertainment complex. Major adjacency bonus to theater square campus and commercial hub districts. Standard adjacency bonus to the holy side district. And it provides fresh water. That is a pretty nice natural wonder. So I was talking about Diplomatic favor. So diplomatic favor is mostly used in the World Congress. I will show you the World Congress mechanics once that actually gets founded. I actually really like the way World Congress works. But you can use diplomatic favor as currency. So you can actually buy and sell things for diplomatic favor. And one of the new things you can do in Gathering Storm is to get people to join existing wars. And if you can't pay them in gold, for example, or you don't want to pay them, let's say, 2,000, you can pay them in diplomatic favor. You can just use diplomatic favor as currency for literally anything. So I could maybe get one from him by selling him some iron, for example. He might be willing to accept that at some point. The smallest useful amount of diplomatic favor in the World Congress is 10, which is not a whole lot, honestly. So that's diplomatic favor in a nutshell. Okay, and I think I'm going to settle the volcano now. Not because it's necessarily a brilliant idea, but mostly because I hope it will blow up at some point. And I'll show you how disasters actually work in practice. But I would also like to settle the Dead Sea. And there will be disasters here as well, because this location is susceptible to flooding. So you know what? Let's settle close to the Dead Sea, because that's an actual better city location and I will hopefully still be able to showcase natural disasters with that. We'll grab Alpine promotion for our scout. And we got two more builds, so we'll grab the horses and then probably the cattle. There, we got more horses, so now we will be getting four horses per turn. And speaking of strategic resources, some units actually require upkeep in strategic resources. Mostly ones that use oil, for example. So you actually need to expand oil per turn for some of the units. It can be a little bit tricky to manage. I really like this change. It has big implications on overall strategy. That's easily one of my favorite smaller changes. But it's not even that small, it's huge. So there's another quarry, very nice. This is going to be a pretty good city. I'm glad we settled it. And we are about to unlock our government pretty soon. So, let's settle the city, shall we? We should probably do it right here. Okay, yeah, that's going to be the tile. And we can settle right away. There it is. Plus one error score, Philadelphia. Yeah, that's a Maori city, all right. Sounds legit. So now, in theory, I could buy a builder, but there's no need to do that. I might, however, buy a monument to make our borders expand faster. So you know what? Let's buy a monument and we'll get started on a granary. Here's plus one error score, because we finished political philosophy. Yeah, let's go for oligarchy. I like that one. That's one slot each, 
and also some bonuses for our units for when we go to war. As for policies, we are going to keep urban planning, we are going to keep maritime industries because we still need a quadrium and it's still in the queue, and we could grab charismatic leader because we definitely need that, and we can get one more. So either plus two gold from trade routes, maybe plus 30% production towards builders because we still need builders, or we could get land surveyors. So how about we just buy a builder and get land surveyors to buy some land? And we can just straight up buy a builder in our capital. Our capital because that's where Liang is. That's 260 gold, I'm okay with this. And we should be able to buy a tile or two in a few turns. So that's exactly what we're going to do. As for research, yeah, I think I'll just research irrigation at this point. It's only one turn and that way we can improve the citrus with this guy. So we'll send one guy to Philadelphia and the other guy to our second city. As for the next civic, that's going to be games and recreation. We will not be waiting for construction. Thousands so that gives us irrigation. There it is. Not one. And we can improve the citrus right away. So that's that. And we'll send this guy southwest. We can also start thinking about the fourth settler, and our fourth city is going to be near the volcano. So that hopefully I'll be able to showcase the volcano exploding. We'll see. I'm hoping it's going to happen. I set disaster frequency to maximum, and we still haven't really seen one yet, and it's already turned 63. That is a little bit disappointing. Things are looking pretty good so far. We are building some campuses, so that will speed up the research. And let's improve the citrus, and then we can sell it right away. So let's sell it to one of the coupes. <laughs> no idea which one this is, but we can sell it, sure. I kind of like my gold, so I will not be sending a delegation. So now we can actually buy some diplomatic favor. We are definitely going to need it in the future. He will give us 11, which is all he has. I definitely want that. And he will also give us gold on top of this. Okay, this is actually pretty damn good. Like I said before, the lowest usable amount of diplomatic favor in the World Congress is 10. And right now we got 14. We will get plus 1 per turn from the government. There are all kinds of things that give you a per turn diplomatic favor increase. One of them are alliances, so it's definitely worth getting alliances, even more so than in Rise and Fall. And you also get some from city-states if you are their suzerain. So that's definitely worth doing too. And diplomatic favor can be really strong in the World Congress, as you'll see once the World Congress is actually founded. So will this guy sell us some? And now he actually wants to buy some from us, not other way around. Okay, we can however sell our iron. How much will he give us? He will give us 107 exactly for 20 iron. I'm okay with this, mostly because I need the gold. And we got land surveyors active. Oh hey, we, he actually settled the city, but now it's losing loyalty. Interesting. If we could grab another governor title, we could get a second governor and send him here. I could just do it right now if I want to. Because maybe we can get that city to flip. Let's give it a shot, why not? We'll reassign Liang. Okay, let's give it a shot. It might just work. We'll see about that. Also, here's a wonder that awards Aaron per turn. Awards 4 iron per turn, provides plus 4 faith to all your cities that are within 6 tiles, must be built on desert. So now AIs want to buy our diplomatic favor, but I'm not willing to sell it. We can however sell horses because we are capped again, so he should be willing to sell us some of his, yep, he does indeed. We can get quite a lot actually. We can get 15. That's definitely worth it. Let's do that. 
okay, yeah, he moved the governor into that city, so it will not flip, but we grabbed the tiles. He mostly settled it for the iron. Hey, we can just go to war with him a little bit later and conquer that city, that's definitely a possibility. And here we can grab some more. Uh, actually no, he doesn't have any diplomatic favor to sell at the moment. Let's try to sell the iron to others. Yeah, we can sell 20 to this fella. Here, this is the deal we can get. 50 gold and 8 diplomatic favor. That's a pretty good one. Also, if you want to go for a diplomatic victory, you are going to need a lot of diplomatic favor. I'll put it that way. That seems pretty obvious, but just to make it clear. Mostly because you need to buy diplomatic victory points with favor. And that can require a lot of them. It doesn't come into play until much later into the game, but if you don't have a lot built up by then, you have no chance to get a diplomatic victory. And we can do some more trading. This guy has 20 too. Okay, will he buy our strategic resources? Let's say we'll sell the horses. We can sell 20 horses. Will he give us, let's say, 10 favor? Yeah, he will. That's a pretty good deal. Let's do that. So, which exact tile do we want to settle on here? Uh, probably on the hill. Or on the desert. There's also another option. We could settle here. That way we would get the stone in range. We would get that forest. We would still get like four hills and several sea-based resources. We would get what? Four sea-based resources still. The fish will be in range. Turtles will be in range. Whales will be in range. And this fish will be in range. I think that's actually superior. This tile right here. This exact one. We want to get the wheat, but we can't get everything on that island with one single city. We have to give up something. So, yeah, let's settle right here. That seems to be the better location. There we go. Plus one error score. The only downside is that I might have to buy a tile to be able to work something decent. But I think the turtles are decent enough in this situation. I might, however, buy the monument to make our borders expand faster. Yeah, let's buy the monument. And then we can queue up the granary. Because otherwise the housing limit will be a little bit too low and we'll get a builder in our capital then we can send him here so let's queue him up after the library and there it is i just heard a barbarian camp spawning somewhere <laughs> that's a first can't quite see it but apparently it spawned somewhere i like how i basically have no military at this point i have one ship one warrior so, let's remove the marsh, that will give us 6 population, and we'll be using that tile for a district. And there's construction boost. So, we got 2 more builds. We could send him elsewhere. We could also buy a tile. I think I'm going to send him elsewhere. Or we could buy the whales. That is an actual luxury. So, that's an option. And next up, let's get a granary, because we are getting close to our housing limit in there. Uh, more horses to sell, sure. Give me the favor. Here, 10 diplomatic favor. Let's go for that then. And we got a governor title. So now we can actually get a governor. I'm thinking maybe the educator. Or we could get Amani. That way we'll get two envoys. And you would actually be able to become the suzerain right away. This isn't exactly the city-state I wanted, because I still want Antioch. But that way, we'll be able to get more diplomatic favor. So I like that idea, actually. Let's get Amani. Okay, Amani it is then. And off you go. Once she's established, we will get plus two envoys. And there we go. We got her natural disaster. 1000 year flood. Okay. So two tiles were damaged and four tiles were fertilized. That's how it works. 
our city lost quite a bit of health, as you can see. So, disasters can damage both cities and also units. So now these tiles are not just planes, they are planes, flood planes. The downside is that they got lower appeal. As you can see, appeal is actually uninviting on this one, minus 3. Uninviting on this one, minus 2. But the yields got improved. We should also be able to see it on the world climate. So, there it is, 1000 year flood. May add fertility to tiles it passes over, may damage improvements or districts, may damage units or reduce seed populations. This is actually a pretty good outcome. Only two tiles were damaged and four tiles were fertilized. I quite like that. Get the pearls and we can try to sell the pearls. There we go, that's a pretty good deal I would say. And we became the first suzerain in the world, apparently. Create so now, we will be getting another plus one diplomatic favor per turn. Because we are the suzerain. So if you want to go for a diplomatic victory, that's one of the things you really need to focus on. And also alliances. And this guy wants to buy even more. So, you know, generally speaking, you will be doing a lot of trading in Gathering Storm. If only because you will be hitting the strategic cap pretty frequently. And you just don't want strategic resources to go to waste. Might as well sell them. Which is a good thing. As in, it's a good thing that you will interact with AIs a lot more than previously. I like that. There's actually a reason to do a lot more diplomacy now. There are multiple reasons. Because you can also get people to join existing wars. That's one of the diplomatic changes I really like. And we met another city-state. Good. Recruit a great admiral. It's Valletta. Okay. So city center buildings and encampment district buildings can be bought with faith. Yeah. Some of the AIs will want to buy your diplomatic favor. And it can be tempting to sell it, but it's really useful in the World Congress, as you'll see. I don't think it's a good idea to sell diplomatic favor, unless you are really desperate. So you can use it as an alternative for buying something with money. Or you can just sell it for money, that's also a possibility. But personally, I don't think I'll be doing it very often. It's just too valuable. So let's buy some from him and also gold. Okay, yeah, that's decent enough. Let's do that. There we go. And we got Withering Drought. We don't get too many details here. I'll have to open Everything the Climate tab. So let's take a look. There it is, Withering Drought. Near our city. We'll drop food by one per tile if the city has no aqueduct, dam or step well. May destroy or pillage farms, camps, pastures, and plantations. So that's a pretty bad one. And we can see the tiles it's affecting. Withering drought, 10 more turns. So it might destroy our plantation right here. In fact, it already did. So now, not only we lost the plantation, we lost the luxury. That's pretty nasty. One of the things I would also like to show you are the climate change mechanics, but that doesn't really come into play until later into the game. So I'm not going to talk about that just yet because there's no point. I can't really show you anything until at least mid-late game. Rumor is that Maori are training with Maori. <laughs> no shit. They didn't see that one coming. And there's medieval era. We also got a religion. So there it is, our golden age. So, which one do we want here? Alright, since we are only getting plus one faith per turn and we have less than 100 stockpiled, let's go for the first one. Here it is. And here's the World Congress. So now I can actually show you how this works. Because you might have heard that the proposals are random, which is kind of true, but that doesn't tell the whole story. The important part is how the proposals actually work. So here we got two proposals. We got mercenary companies, which is select an outcome for this resolution. And we got two possible outcomes. Producing or purchasing military units 
using the chosen currency type, is plus 100% of the cost until the next World Congress. Or, producing or purchasing military units using the chosen currency type is minus 50% of the cost until the next World Congress. So we can also see who is going to favor this outcome, which is not useful with my current game setup, but you get the point. And our first vote is free. The second vote will cost 10 diplomatic favor. The third vote will cost 20 diplomatic favor. Then 30, 40, 50 and so on. So it gets progressively more expensive. But if you're really desperate for a specific outcome, you can dump a lot of diplomatic favor into the votes. And you will also need it in the same fashion to get diplomatic victory points. In any case, if I pick this outcome, then we have to choose which exact currency type we want that to apply to. So we could make this apply to production. We can make it apply to gold. We can make it apply to faith. Since we will not be getting our own religion, let's try to make it apply to faith. Now, I don't really care about this particular outcome, so I will not be spending diplomatic favor for that. But here we got the second proposal. We can get plus 100% production towards buildings in this district. Or, no buildings can be created in this district. We definitely don't want the second one to go through. That would be pretty bad. But I wouldn't mind plus 100% production towards buildings in either a campus or a commercial hub. We are about to finish a commercial hub, so that would be nice. But we could also target the campus. That will be less useful because I already built two libraries. So I'm thinking it will be more useful to target the commercial hub. We could also target the industrial zone because that's what we are currently researching. And it will be 30 turns until the next World Congress. But I think commercial hub will be best. And we can actually spend some diplomatic favor for this one. Not too much. I think I'll spend 10. And that will be fine. If we get a different outcome, that's fine. I just hope the second one won't go through. Because then we won't be able to build any buildings in that particular district type for the next 30 turns. That can be really bad. So now we will submit our proposal and we'll see what the outcome is going to be. And here's the outcome. So, mercenary companies passed, and the outcome is that producing or purchasing military units, blah blah blah, will be plus 100% of the cost, and elected target is faith. So it will apply to faith, and we can see who exactly voted and how. So everyone voted for the first outcome, which is the option A, and most of them targeted faith. Literally everyone except this guy. This guy targeted gold. And the second proposal, elected outcome A. Elected target city center, plus 100% production towards buildings in this district. So city center. I'm the only one who spent favor to get extra votes. And you can see who targeted what. We targeted commercial hub, Several AIs targeted city center, two of them targeted theater square. So since the majority voted for the city center, it's going to be the city center. And that's how the World Congress works. It's a really interesting system. I actually like it a lot. So is that volcano ever going to blow up? Would be nice. That's not a sentence you hear very often, but hey, I want it to blow up. There's a 5% chance. It will go up over time. We got two active volcanoes. And this one is one of the active volcanoes, so it should blow up at some point. And we still got the drought. Only three more turns. We'll wait three more turns. Otherwise, we might just lose the plantation. And we can sell citrus. Right, let's sell it for diplomatic favor. Will you give us all of yours? Yeah, he actually will. Okay then. Honestly, I'm actually thinking AIs are a little bit too willing to sell diplomatic favor sometimes. Don't get me wrong, I like that you can buy so much. 
it just feels they are too willing to sell it. And it is quite valuable. So there it is, let's buy that. Having said that, I'm also buying it instead of the gold. So technically I'm missing out on gold because I'm buying favor instead of gold. We are up to 202 diplomatic favor and this is only turn 101. If it ain't broke, There's engineering. Engineers. Yeah, let's maybe get out of here. I think we're going to lose that scout. Whoops. Okay, and the drought is over. We got an event right here. Welcome rainfall. Now we can rebuild the plantation without a risk of having it destroyed. So now we got an emergency proposal in the World Congress because one of the AIs captured a city from another AI. That's something you need to consider when you go to war. You can have an emergency voted for against you. And here's the proposal. The cost of this discussion will be 30 diplomatic favor. So let's say we are in favor. Submitting the selected discussions will cost 30 diplomatic favor and will trigger special session of the World Congress during the next turn. So we can pay 30 and have a discussion about it, but we don't have to. But I want to show you how exactly that works. So we are going to trigger the discussion. So there it is. That's the special session of the World Congress. And we will vote for military emergency against Maori, obviously. So we will gain score by keeping units in the target's territory, by attacking target cities, and by killing target units. During this emergency, target units will have minus two combat strength when fighting member units. Member units gain plus one movement in the target's territory, and the target gains plus 20 loyalty per turn in the target city. In addition, all members will have peace, open borders, and shared visibility with each other. All members will go to war with the target. If the members complete all objectives before time runs out, member units gain plus 5 healing in the target's territory. Members get 100 diplomatic favor, so that's quite a bit. If the time runs out before the members complete their objective, the target gains plus 2 combat strength when fighting a member unit, and the target gains plus 200 diplomatic favor. So let's vote in favor, and we can add one additional vote. Here, we'll submit our votes, and let's check the outcome. It actually failed. Okay, so if I spent some more favor, it would have passed. Yeah, he actually paid more to vote against it, which obviously makes sense. Well, there it is, so that's how it works. Bit of a shame it didn't go through, because then we could actually go to war. But that's okay. That's basically how the special session works. It's definitely something you need to be careful about. If you go for domination victory, or if you just like warmongering like I do. Just something to consider. Because this will also happen against you. In case that's not obvious enough. Anyway, we are going to end it here, and before I finish, I'll leave you with the event history screen. This shows all the disasters that happened until now. We are on turn 108, and we had 5 disasters so far. This is on the maximum disaster setting. I will be doing a lot more Gathering Storm videos, this is just the first one of many. I'm really enjoying this expansion so far. It has a lot of great features, both big ones and small ones. And if you have any ideas or things you would like me to do, then feel free to let me know in the comments. I always appreciate the feedback and I always appreciate the support. So I hope you enjoyed this video, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.